All right, welcome back to Shaving with Fuzzy. I'm Fuzzy. Hi, y'all. On Friday evening, so we're going to work tonight, and then we have a meeting in the morning. Our uh, everybody get together. I think we do it every quarter or something like that, and uh, everybody get together. So we'll have a meeting in the morning after I get off. So anyway, it made for a long day, but that's okay. Had a little meeting Wednesday. It went well. It was a good little meeting. So. Uh, yeah, it's important sometimes to get out. All right, so uh, yeah, today we're going to use some sterling products. We've got the uh, sterling scarn soap, and I've got the sterling bore brush. We're going to use this wonderful, if you saw my unboxing video from, uh, I think it was yesterday, Whiskey Woods. This is my, yeah, I think it's moved into my second favorite spot. Uh, favorite, probably always going to be Clubman. <coughs> Excuse me. But, uh. I think it's probably going to move into the second spot. We'll see. So we got the old uh, Auto Strop A out, A1 here. And uh, the reason for that is that uh, I was tagged in a video. Is it stubble and steel? Excuse me for having to guess. But anyway, uh, he was using one of the VC2s or something like that. It's one of the ones where you have the door. So normally you would use the, uh, you know, you would use the feather blade. And I told him I was going to talk about this. Uh, hey, yeah, you know, it's your razor. You, you can do what you want to. But what he did was he used a regular, uh, he used a uh, regular gym blade. And then he just took a dremel and dremeled off the little where it's punched out where you would have to have the holes. Now, it works. And he got a really good shave out of it because, it, you know, it is a, a, an auto strop, a valet. But uh, the problem is you have to adjust the blade and make sure it's up against the stops and make sure it stays. And I don't think that's really stable because the door going across, if it's warped or bent and they get that way, it's probably not going to hold the blade tight. And uh, the blade could walk, that kind of stuff. But look, it worked. He, he got a good shave personally. No, I'm not going to do that. But anyway, this is the feather blade. I don't know how many shaves are on this blade, uh, so it may work really well and it may not. You see, we've got a... Uh, I was off yesterday, so we've got a little growth there to play with. But uh, I'm looking forward to wearing the Whiskey Woods to work and see what uh, see what people think. I get uh, I get people fairly often saying, "Oh, you smell good today." Yeah, that's what I'm after. We want to sneak stink more better, eh? Stink more better. And uh, I found me a neat little thing for the uh, scar in here. I've been keeping it in a cottage cheese uh, container. And that worked just fine. It don't matter. But anyway, I saw this laying around. I said, hey, that'll make a good one for it. And I think I'm going to be right. So anyway, it's going to lather like a sterling soap because it is. And I've got the sterling uh, bore brush here. I want to get one of the green handle sterling brushes. That's on my list. But uh, so far, I haven't got there. I've got so much stuff. It's hard, hard buying stuff. But anyway, so uh, Matthew Lawrence the other day, I believe is the right name. Did a video where he was boxing up some stuff to send to me. I still have not watched that video. He put on there, uh, you know, don't watch shaving with fuzzy. Now, at first I took that mean not to go watch my videos. I, I thought I was going to get beat up for something. But uh, once I paid attention, he just didn't want me to watch the video because he was showing the stuff he was boxing up to send. Very nice of him. He's a good guy. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't uh, checked out his shave channel, you should. Yeah, the very calm voice and uh very enjoyable enjoyable to watch the the other one i mentioned there uh steel and stubble or you know i probably should have looked that up before i started the video to be sure i had it right but i didn't but anyway i'm going to uh i'm going to tag him on this video the way he tagged me on that video he's tagged me on a couple doing uh Single edge shades. He did a comparison the other day of the featherweight and a uh, hog proof. And it was a nice video. He's got good technique and it's nice videos and he's got a lot of knowledge and he's easy to listen to. And so yeah, it's uh, definitely uh, definitely good stuff. By right, golly. All right, we're going to add just a little more water in here. I heard somebody commented on my lather the other day. Oh, it's been a little while back now, but uh, I pretty much told him to, you know, go away. 
I think I did it in a nice way though. But anyway, let's see if this here uh, auto strop. Now this is not a valet auto strop. This is an auto strop. This is the first one, the A. And uh, it is a very, very nice razor. Oh yeah, that's gonna be just fine. Look right there, that first pass, and already all that old stuff cleaned up. So it's gonna do just fine. These, these feather blades, you know, you get a couple of three shades out of them and they're about done. But, uh, you know, you can actually use them in all the different valets. I think there's one model you can't use them. I say that every time I do a valet shave and I've never gone to look up and see which model it is. But anyway, I do believe there is one model that does not work with either the feather blades or the modified gym. And you can, you can still find the uh, vintage auto shot blades, but they don't, they don't work good. Even if you have a strop and you want to go strop them, and I've heard people talk about they're going to go strop them and all, and it just really doesn't work. The blades are deteriorated over years to the point to where they just don't, uh, they won't take an edge. And if you try to use the strops on the modern blades, to me it just dulls them. They become basically unusable. But go ahead and tell me I'm wrong. There's always that person that does it all the time and it always works. And you got to use this tool or that tool or another tool. I don't think it matters what tool you use. There was a gentleman the other day talking about he was going to use a wheel for like he used for honing knives. And uh, that's an interesting idea. I'm not 100% sure that won't work. I, uh, I'm not sure that, that that may do it, but the problem is you're trying to hold a razor blade and hold it on a wheel. You have to use pliers or whatever, and I'm curious as how good that's going to work. But uh, I'm going to keep an eye on the comment section on that video and see if he comes back and says if he did it and how it worked. And, uh, you know, I could I could see that working. But a regular strop is not going to bring those blades back. Of course, a strop doesn't sharpen anyway, right? It just straightens the feathers out on the blade. And it can clean if it has a little little rust on it or whatever. It could clean. I could see we clean that off. It's not going to do anything about the pitting. But uh, but anyway, so that would be interesting to see. But I I don't uh, I don't hold out a lot of hope for it personally. All right, get a little uh, across the grain stuff here. And. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, a little bit of a traffic rant. Let's not do a whole lot today. Louisiana law says that slower traffic moves right. Now, I haven't been able to find out. I was told at one time that that wasn't really for the surface streets, that it was for the streets to where the speed limit was 65 or over. I have not been able to find... And one reason I may have found it because I really hadn't spent that much time on it, to be quite honest. But uh, I know that's Louisiana law. And we've got a section of road up here that's about, I don't know, three or four miles, three miles maybe, maybe four miles. It's kind of down through the trees and everything. There's not a whole lot of stuff down through there. It's 55 miles an hour. People are driving 65, 70 all the time through there. But anyway, People want to sit there and ride in the left-hand lane because I'm running the speed limit. I, the law does not say that slower traffic moves right unless you're driving speed limit. It, it doesn't say that. It says slower traffic keeps right. It's not our job as citizens to worry if somebody else is running over the speed limit. And I know the excuse, and before I understood the law, I used to use the same excuse sometimes. You know, I'm running five over the speed limit, why should I move? Well, the answer is, you should know, because you're slower traffic. The law has nothing to do with speed. Does not does not say that the speed limit has anything to do with that. Now, it's just how it is. 
So I, I go out and I'm running and I keep getting behind folks that are that are running, you know, five miles under the speed limit or whatever they're doing, and they're sitting there hogging up the left lane. Now it's getting ready to turn, that's one thing. But down through there, they're not they're not getting ready to turn. You're transitioning from one part of town to the other part of town, kinda. And uh it turns into a major it turns into a major uh road on up and uh it just that, that's what's eating on my nerves today i just went out i needed some cleaning stuff and some uh treats and stuff for the dogs miss luna got to have her treats so does mr hash brown but uh anyway so i went out to a, a place called ollie's good stuff cheap discount store and right next door to it is a uh, dollar tree and then right next to that it if there's uh, anything else I need, is a Dollar General. So it's a good little shopping center. It doesn't take too long to get there usually. But when you're cruising down through there, and you got folks that are just cadillac in the cruising lane, it's just uh, it's annoying. It's just annoying. And they have no clue. It's not always. Now, sometimes it's because, you know, they're on their cell phones. That's a... That's a constant problem, but it's not always that. Today, the, the ones that I were having to dodge around, that wasn't it. They were just, it was an older vehicle, and it had some damage on it, and they're just cruising along, getting where they're going, which I think is great. I think it is absolutely great that you go along and you have a vehicle that will get you where you're going, so you ain't got to walk. I get it. I've driven junk. Pretty well drive junk now, although my junk is probably in better shape than a lot of people's junk. And I take pains to keep it that way. All right, look at that, boy. Look at that auto strop. Clean all that mess up. Got a good smooth lip going on there. It annoys me when I shave. And then later on, I notice I missed a couple of hairs on my lips. A lot of times when you're judging your shave, you need to wait a little while. Give it time to, uh, to dry and everything. There's no such thing. Now, remember this, because this is important. I don't care what your barber tells you. There is no such thing as the pores opening and closing with the hot water and the hot water rub to open up and then the cold water to close the pores. Pores do not open and close. Doesn't happen. I realize warm skin is more elastic. Colder skin is less elastic. I get it. However, pores do not open and close. Don't let anybody tell you they do. There is no mechanism in the skin that opens and closes pores. Now, most every barber I've ever talked to want to tell you that it does, and the, you know, two day below the skin shave. There's no such thing. But anyway, if you'll wait a little while before you judge a shave sometimes, you might find that something you thought wasn't a really good shave, it just smells so good. This stuff, if you, I, I was reluctant to try the newer stuff. Now they've got some other, what do they have one, uh, uh, gin and tonic or whatever it is, I don't know. I'll have to go look, but they had some newer newer scents, and this is one of them, and I've been avoiding it, because, uh, you know, it's newer. I didn't think it would be that good, and uh, I'm wrong. I'm wrong on this one. Now, I don't know if I'm wrong on the other ones, but I am definitely wrong on this particular one. This is just an incredible scent. It's a barbershop scent, but it's a really what I would call a, a masculine barbershop scent. When I was growing up, I had an uncle, and my brother, who was older, uh, knew him a lot better than I did. I, re I remember him coming over. I, I remember him, my dad's brother, uh, my biological dad's brother, and uh, he worked in a gravel. Uh, they unloaded gravel off the river, and my dad was a drag line operator, I understand, and, and Uncle Buddy drove the, the front end loader. And he always chewed um, the double mint gum, as I remember that, that's how I remember it. Now, if I'm wrong, you know, oh well. But, but this is the kind of scent that someone that, in my mind, you know, that, that worked a job like that, and, and uh, you know, he was a he was a good guy. This is a scent that I think somebody like that would have would have wore back in the day. Something similar to this. It's. Uh, a very good scent. It's going to be my, like I said, my second favorite scent. It's not going to replace clubbing in my book, but it is definitely uh, going to be a, a very much of a go-to scent. So there we go. 
Look at that. All cleaned up, getting ready for work. <coughs> Got to be at work tonight, overnight, and then the meeting in the morning. So it's going to be a eight, uh, probably about a 14 hour night. 13, 14 hours for it's over with. I did some of those last week working some special coverage, we call it. That worked out really well. I walked a lot more and stood on my feet a lot more than I'm used to. I'm, I'm used to sitting down more these days than the old walking a post and, and, and constantly being on my feet. But I can still do it. I went out and did my two-mile walk last night. Sometime during the week, I went and did a three-mile walk. I'm trying to get back into walking so I don't put weight back on. Birthday coming up Monday, so, uh, you know... Around birthdays, I guess we start kind of feeling like we need to take care of ourselves, maybe. We start thinking about things like that. So, there we go. So, remember, slower traffic, right-hand lane. Stay out of the way to move people move a little faster. Uh, like I said, down through there, you got people running 65 and 70. So, when I'm running 60, I generally run 5 over the speed limit. I'm still obligated to move over to the right lane. And guess what, folks? You is, too. As they say where I come from. All right, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, remember old toast 3 toast 3com And uh, there's a lot of good information over there. This video will probably be posted over there. If not, the shave will be in the shave of the day section. But anyway, there you go. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, happy shaves to you.